Hi there everyone and welcome back to Good Brothers. We are back open as a bar again. This is what it actually looks like without loads of food stuffed around it. Today we're going to look at a topic really close to my heart and this is Burgundy. Probably one of the biggest and most misunderstood wine regions but probably one of the most famous as well. Burgundy is where my heart lies, it's where I started winemaking as a youngster back in the early 2000s working for a very famous company, Louis Jadot, based in Bonn. Now Burgundy is in France. Burgundy sits between two cities, Dijon in the north and Lyon in the south. There are a couple of offshoots here where Chablis is between Dijon and Paris and we'll come back to Chablis separately and also we encompass uh, the Beaujolais which sits right down near to Lyon. Um, the Maconnet, the Chamonix, uh, and then you have the two Côtes, Côte de Bourne, Côte de Nuit, as you go further north. We're going to look at all these in detail throughout this, or throughout the next two episodes. Um, so, let's get started. As we said, Burgundy sits between Dijon and Lyon in its majority. It's a wonderful, very thin vineyard area that the best vineyards sit on east facing slopes on a slight hill. Now many people say what makes Burgundy great is the aspect of the vineyards, so on the slope, the soils which tend to be clay, limestone and marl, uh, and then also the fact that the rain shadow or the lack of, of overt rain keeps it drier. The, the climate is fantastic. And there are some very famous names in the entire entirety of Burgundy. When you go from north to south, and we'll forget Chablis for now because we'll come back to Chablis later on, but you have the Côte Nouille, which has vineyards, regions like uh, Marsanet, Fisson, uh, Gervais Chamatin, Clos Vougeau, um, Alocoton, um, lots of really famous, famous regions which make stunning wines, some of the most expensive wines in the world. And we must make a point here and, and forgive me if we're being quite basic but the principal grape variety here is Pinot Noir. So Pinot Noir is the king of grapes here. In the south in the Côte de Beaune which is the second of the larger appellations which is south of the village or town of Beaune, Chardonnay is queen here and in Côte de Beaune we have areas like uh, Pouligny Monchet, Chassin Monchet, Morceau, uh, and then we go south to the likes of uh, the Chardonnay, Chardonnay and uh, the Maconnay, uh, where we also have Chardonnay dominance. Then we come to Beaujolais, where it's Gamay, but we'll do Beaujolais and Chablis slightly differently. So these are really famous regions, make beautifully elegant wines, really, really uh, world beating wines, and a price tag to match. Now, I said, one of the reasons why uh, the reds in the Cote Nuit in the north are so highly regarded is some very good vine age, perfect growing conditions, a new fixation on growing and working in a natural way. So really emphasizing the vineyard management. And this is key when we keep talking about quality winemakers, vineyard management is how you make good wine. Because if you send duff wines into the winery, stuff grapes into the winery, then you're going to have a duff wine coming out of the end. If the quality of the grapes going into the winery is absolutely brilliant, you don't need to do much in the winery. And this is the beauty of sort of the organic, biodynamic, natural wine movement. So you have people like David Duband, you have uh, people like uh, Angro, who are making stunning, stunning wines up here. And Angro's wines are so widely regarded. I tried to buy some on Premier this year, I was laughed at. It's just impossible. These wines go for hundreds and hundreds of pounds a bottle. Um, and it's, it's, they're, they're brilliant. Um, as you move further south, through the, the beautiful town of Bone, where we have the, the Hospice de Bone and the auctions every year, which raises money for charity um, by selling off some of the new vintage wines to collectors, um, you come to the villages of Chassin Moshe, Pouligny Moshe, and Morceau. These three wines, even though they are so close together in proximity, create really different styles. Some muscular, some elegant, some restrained, some full of fruit. Again, it's the beauty of Burgundy. 
the way that vineyards are owned is very different. If you go down to Bordeaux and you find a huge big estate, they will own everything and they will pick and choose what they plant there. And some years they, they might go, actually, you know what, we're gonna take up these vines now. They've been there for 50 years. We're gonna plant with something else because we think the soil suit are better there. But the vineyard size never changes. Well, if it changes, it only increases. Burgundy is different. Over generations, vineyards have been passed down from generation to generation, but they don't go from, for example, father to one of the sons and the other two choose not to, to be involved. It goes from father to all three of the siblings and they get subdivided. So what once was a large vineyard holding after three or four generations becomes very, very small. You might have 15 children who have all got a, a couple of rows. Now what this means is that the style of winemaking within an, in a vineyard can be totally different from one block to the next to the next. Also, the subsoils can be really different from vineyard to vineyard as well, which means that you can have a vineyard in Poligny, Monchet, side by side with another vineyard, but they make different styles of wine. It is absolutely fascinating. Burgundy deserves hours and hours of film talking about it. This is just scratching the surface. That's the Côte Nuit, that's the Côte de Beaune. They both sit north and south of the town of Beaune in Burgundy. Next time, we're gonna look at Chablis and Beaujolais and the Maconnais. So until then, drink better wine. <laughs>